today I'm so excited because we are getting down to business. I've been doing research, people. I have statistics. Basically, today I'm gonna be ranking the Sims 4 packs from the best packs to the least favorite packs. Because it's Christmas time, a lot of you guys might be looking to get some of the new packs and wondering which ones are worth getting. I've ranked all the expansion packs, game packs, and stuff packs from my favorite to my least favorite. So hopefully I can help you out a bit on which ones are worth your time and money. I also didn't think my own personal opinion was enough because The Sims is such a subjective game. Every player plays it differently. People are gonna like and dislike different things. I also released a poll the other day where I had, I think, 35 500 of you voting and ranking on what was your most favorite packs to least favorite packs. So we're gonna have a look at those side by side and hopefully we'll help you make a more informed decision about which packs you wanna get. And I'm personally just really curious to see how my opinion stacks up against the majority of you guys who voted. So thank you very much to those of you who have voted in the poll. I really appreciate it. Let's start with expansions, then we'll do game packs and stuff packs. The best expansion pack, in my opinion, for you to get would be The Sims 4 Seasons. The Sims 4 Seasons brings seasons to your game. You can have summer, autumn, winter, spring, and they also bring a lot of festivals and holidays to your gameplay as well. So you have Father Winter come for Winterfest, the Flower Bunny around Easter time. You can also woohoo with your scarecrow, which is really cool. One of my favorite parts of this pack is also the fact that gardening is a lot more realistic. I love gardening in The Sims 4, so having seasons really enhances that kind of gameplay. There's also a lot of fun activities like rollerblading and skating. But I think the biggest reason why I rank this as the number one expansion pack for you to get is because having seasons in your game enhances everything you do in gameplay. It makes time more interesting. It keeps you engaged in the game. It allows you to make more storylines up. It brings in more challenges challenges that you can do. Build and buy is awesome. Create a sim is awesome. You have summer and winter wear. There's new deaths you can freeze to death and overheat. What more could you want? So yeah, seasons is the best in my opinion. That would be the first expansion pack that I get in my game. And no, you don't get a new world, but it enhances all of your existing worlds. So I feel like that's okay with me. Interestingly, the polls also voted this as the number one expansion pack to get. A whopping 50% of voters listed it as number one on their list. So I think that's a pretty strong argument that this is the number one expansion pack. At number two, I've put City Living as the second best expansion pack. I think the the main reason why I did this is because it brings apartment living to the game and a city world. The city world of San Myshuno is a really beautiful city with different areas you can live in. There's a lot of gameplay potential in this pack as well. You can go to festivals, you can do karaoke, there's some really cool bars, you can paint murals on the ground or on garage doors. There's three new careers, there's a politics career, there's an art critic career and also the social media career. Build and Buy is really awesome. I love some of the pieces that came to build industrial warehouses. And there's a lot of different cultures represented in this pack as well, which I think a lot of players appreciated. Interestingly, City Living was also ranked at number two in the polls. At number three, I put down Cats and Dogs as the third strongest pack, and also the polls put Cats and Dogs as number three as well. Cats and Dogs brings Cats and Dogs to your game. It also brings a gorgeous world of Brindleton Bay to your gameplay, which is one of my favorite worlds. And you can also build and run a vet, which I really enjoyed exploring in gameplay as well. Build and Buy is really, really nice. It has a Hamptons aesthetic, also a beach vibe to it, which I think was quite unique. And I just feel like having pets in your game is very reflective of real life. And it's definitely something that a lot of players really appreciate having the opportunity to do. Number four, I listed Get Famous, which is crazy because in the polls, Get Famous was the second least favorite pack. I can't believe that. I loved Get Famous. Get Famous brings the world of acting and the world of fame to your game. There is a new world called Del Sol Valley, which is full of mansions. It's quite reflective of Hollywood. And it also has a more rundown downtown area that you can live in as well. I have to say the world was a bit disappointing. I feel like the world was too small, but I do think if you wanna play the life of a celebrity, it definitely suits that storyline. Build and buy is really cool. I love that there's a juxtaposition between super glamorous, over the top leopard print and gold furnishing aside 
mid-century modern pieces that really I use so much in my game. I think they are really great pieces and I love create a sim as well. Celebrity status can be applied across lots of different sim activities. You can be your regular Joe and just become known around town for being a good guy, or you can become well known as a writer or other careers that are even just in base game. So I loved this pack. I genuinely am confused why people don't like it. And the acting career is really fun. At number five on my list, I put Eco Lifestyle. I really liked Eco Lifestyle. I thought it was a great pack. I love that they brought the idea of sustainability to the game. I think that's a really positive movement to reflect in the game. And I love that I can make my homes eco-friendly and save on bills. I feel like I got a lot of gameplay out of this pack. It's not necessarily gameplay that I think's entertaining on YouTube, but I think doing it in your own time is really enjoyable. Not to mention build and buy is awesome. And I also like the fact that you can have community lots that can be turned into like maker studios where you can make candles, you can fabricate furniture. It's just such a great pack. Number six, I put Discover University. I was a huge fan of university way back in The Sims 2. The Sims 3, I didn't enjoy it as much. And The Sims 4, I feel like it lacks even more in terms of its depth. I love that my Sims can go to university. I definitely use it for them to go get a degree. And I love that it contributes to their life as an adult later on. Build and buy, create a sim was really good. I think the world's really nice. Dorms are kind of cool, but I got over it pretty quickly. Number seven, I put get to work. Get to work, I think I put it a little higher up because I love a lot of the industrial items that came with the science career. Basically, you can go to work with your sim. It's not gameplay I'm really into, but I think a lot of players would definitely get really into it. There's also a no new world, which I thought lacked quite a bit for an expansion pack. And yes, season has no world, but because the seasons transform every world, I felt like that was fine. Get to work, I guess you go to new lot worlds when you go to work, but I just, I just felt like it lacked a bit. Number eight, I put Snowy Escape. That's the latest pack coming to The Sims 4. The reason why it's so far down the list is because it's a beautiful pack. It's really nice aesthetically. I love going skiing and snowboarding and rock climbing, but I have no incentive to really do it. I think I've completed the incentives like in the first few times I played this expansion pack. After that, I ranked Island Living as second last on my list. I think Island Living is probably my, <laughs> this sounds really harsh. I don't want like any Sim producer or anyone to watch this and feel bad about themselves, but I feel like Island Living was like the biggest disappointment. The gameplay was so like loud lacking in depth. There was just no incentive to do anything. I really feel like they needed hotels or something else in that pack. The pack itself is gorgeous. It's stunning. I love the island. I love the world. I love build and buy and create a sim. It's fantastic. But I just felt like it was too easy to become a mermaid, too easy to find mermaids. They didn't really do much. And when you put it next to like the Sims 3, I don't really like comparing Sims 4 to previous Sims. But if you do compare them, The Sims 3 came with so much more and The Sims 4, it's like, what am I meant to really do with this pack other than it look really pretty? The conservation of the island, I just found boring too. So that's why it's ranked so low for me. And then last on my list is Get Together, which, you know, I could rank it above Snowy Escape and Island Living, but they're just so pretty that I put them further up the list because I'm a sucker for aesthetics. <laughs> the Get Together, it's not a bad pack. Like, I don't think any of the expansion packs deserve to be on the bottom of the list. Like, I think they're all definitely worth it for certain players. But for me, Windenburg, the world that came with it, I don't use it enough. I'm not really into the world. It's got a lovely European vibe to it, but I just don't use it enough. I love the cafes. It could have ranked higher on my list because I love cafes. Also, the concept of what Get Together is as a pack is quite confusing. So I feel like a lot of people wouldn't understand what they're buying. If we put that aside, the polls, like I said, polls voted Seasons as number one, City Living as number two, Cats and Dogs as number three. Number four, they ranked Discover University, which isn't that surprising to me. Number five, Snowy Escape. Not surprising either as it is the latest pack, but I think it might get knocked down the list just from losing the hype. Number six, Eco Lifestyle. 
Number seven, get together. Okay, so get together ranked a lot higher in the polls. Eight, island living. Nine, get famous. How can get famous be ranked below island living? I don't understand. And then number 10, get to work. I think get to work was the first expansion pack, so I'm not... It, I'm not that surprised by it. So for game packs, I rated Parenthood as the best game pack to get. And it's no surprise to me that the polls also voted Parenthood with a massive 67%. Parenthood is fantastic to add to your game. It brings family values and family life to your game. Childhood and teenhood comes to life more. I think there's really fantastic build and buy features and creator sim features. I like that there's character values so your kids will develop more personality during their younger years that they'll carry into adulthood. Whilst I think this is a really well-rounded, well-made game pack, I really wish that it was an expansion pack that came with a nice suburban world and more items. There's so much demand for parent family themed packs. I just could have seen it doing so well if it was bigger, but that's just because the game pack was such a success. So I definitely think it's worth getting. At number two, this is controversial, I actually ranked Vampires as the second best game pack. This isn't because I love vampires. I actually don't usually like playing Supernatural Sims, but I can't deny that this was a really well-made, balanced pack. I think they just did such a great job with it, and I think that Build and Buy mode and also Create a Sim mode has some really cool, like, creepy old Victorian pieces that I love to build with. So if you're into vampires, you will most likely love this pack. If you're not into vampires, you don't need this pack but it was just really well made. And yeah, it's all about vampires. That's the theme of the pack. That's what you're getting out of the pack. That's the reason to buy the pack. Number three, this is also very controversial. I put Strangerville. Strangerville in the polls actually came second last as the second least popular game pack. But I have to say at the time of playing Strangerville, I loved it because it was so different to anything we'd ever seen in The Sims. And yes, I think it has has a shorter lifespan because it's a linear storyline and challenge for you to go through. But I can't deny that I enjoyed it so much, I had to put it high up on the list. I think build and buy mode is really great to carry on in my game, even though I'm not playing the storyline anymore. I wouldn't get this pack if you didn't have the luxury of getting quite a few packs. I feel like you're better off saving your money for a pack that has more lifespan. But if you're able to have the luxury of playing it through and enjoying it that one time, I think it's really worthwhile. Number four, I put Realm of Magic. Again, I thought Realm of Magic was a really well-made pack. I'm not into supernatural gameplay, but I thought in all fairness, they did a great job on it. I loved the aesthetic of it. I loved the creativity in it. The world was really cool. I liked being a spellcaster. I thought the spells were really fun. It does rank lower though, because once I unlocked all the spells, I didn't really play it again, but I think it was an important pack to add to the library of content for The Sims 4. At number five, I ranked Jungle Adventure. Again, I found this really fun. I love the world. I wish we could live in the world permanently though. It's only a vacation world, but I thought this was a really cool pack. Number six, I rank Spa Day. I don't find this pack to be as creative and inspiring and rich in content, but in a practical way, I do like taking my Sims to the spa and it has a really, really good build and buy mode. Number seven, I put Dine Out. I love the idea of taking my Sims to restaurants and running a restaurant, but this pack is so glitchy, it is at times unplayable. I don't go to restaurants anymore because it takes my Sims like 10 hours to dine and I just feel like it's not worth it. Number eight, I put Outdoor Retreat. Outdoor Retreat's actually a really nice pack. Like it's nice to go camping. There's nothing wrong with the pack, it's fine. It was just one of the earlier packs. Actually, I think it was the first game pack, so it's not as rich, but it's a nice pack. I mean, I like camping with my Sims. I think if they had made it later down the track, it would have been very different though. And last on the list is Star Wars Journey to Batu just because it was very random. I don't think it suits many players' preferences. If you're a Star Wars fan, you're probably gonna really enjoy it and find it very interesting, but for the most part, and most of us, 
we're probably not that interested. In the polls, a whopping 80% of people listed this as their least favorite game pack. So if we look at the poll, uh, number one, Parenthood was listed. Number two, Spa Day and Dine Out were listed very closely. Like you could basically say they were neck and neck. Number four was Jungle Adventure. A little bit surprised by that actually. Number five and six was Outdoor Retreat and Vampires. Very surprised Outdoor Retreat is so far up the list. I assume it's because more people have Outdoor Retreat. Realm of Magic was number seven. Number eight was Strangerville. And like I said, number nine last on the list was Star Wars. Let's move on to stuff packs. At number one, I listed Tiny Living. I thought this was such a genius stuff pack. Not only is the concept really fun, it's all about living in tiny homes. The items are so nice, modern, friendly looking, but it also brings to your game for the first time a building challenge, which is to build your home within a certain size and to try and make it function in the best way possible. So this is just a great pack that I think a lot of players are gonna have so much fun with. It wasn't surprising to me that 53% of you guys voted in the polls that Tiny Living was your number one choice as well. At number two, I put Vintage Glamour which ranked number eight in the polls. A lot of you guys are like, why would you put Vintage Glamour as number two? The reason is because you get a butler and I really like having a butler for my Sims because I spoil them rotten. I think there's some cool items in it as well. I like the creator Sim items. I like the build and buy items, but this ranks number two for me just for the butler personal choice. And number three, I ranked laundry stuff pack as my third favorite stuff pack. People want a laundry room. People want to do laundry in their game. So I'm so glad they added this and I'm so glad so many people appreciate it. Get this stuff pack if you want laundry. That is really all it offers, but people love it as well as myself. At number four, I listed Nifty Knitting, which is quite a new pack. I think I'm still a little bit hyped by it being newer. Just really like the idea that your sim can sit back in a rocking chair. Yes, it brings rocking chairs. Am I gonna have to record this through the sound? I really like that your sim can sit quietly knitting in their rocking chair and just knit items. I like that handmade crafty aspect in the game. So if you're into knitting, get the knitting pack. All the items in the pack were voted for by the community and by Sims players. And I like the fact that it has Plopsy, which is kind of like a version of Etsy in it. In the polls, Nifty Knitting was actually voted fifth and Cool Kitchen, which really surprised me, was voted at number four. I think purely because we have such limited kitchen counters in the game, maybe people vote it higher because they like the kitchen counters. I put Cool Kitchen as number nine in my list. I don't like those counters. I feel like there's some good kitchen stuff, but I'm not that into it. For number five in my list, I put Perfect Patio. I like the spas, the hot tubs that you get with it. There is a base game hot tub, but it kind of doesn't look very good. So yeah, I like the hot tubs. I think there's some nice things for your patio as well that I use all the time. Number six, I did kids room. You can't go wrong with kids room. You get more stuff for your kids. I like the void critters too. They're very cute. Number seven, I put the bowling pack. I never go bowling with my Sims. I don't like bowling with my Sims. I like bowling in real life, but not with my Sims. But I love the items that came with this pack. I feel like there's so many nice mid-century modern items that I just needed it. Number eight, I put backyard stuff pack. I think there's some really nice items in this pack. Number nine, I put cool kitchen. Number 10, I put toddler stuff. Toddler stuff's really nice. Like I feel like you could go out and get your kids stuff, your toddler stuff and be really happy with those purchases just because you can add to your kids' rooms and wardrobes. Number 11, I put Romantic Garden because it does have some really nice gardening bushes and plants and it's really nice for landscaping and you get a lot of really nice classic Renaissance looking garden statues and things like that. So I think Romantic Garden can be really nice to build with. Number 12, I put Moschino Stuff Pack. Moschino was not a very well-received pack. People did not like the collaboration, but Moschino Pack was one of those packs that I got the most gameplay out of. I enjoyed it so much. It brought photography to the game. You could be a fashion stylist and that kind of gameplay really resonates with me as a player. The reason why I put it so far down the list is because lately, 
Well, for quite some time now, it's become really, really buggy, which is such a shame. Actually, photography is very buggy at the moment, and I just had to rank it lower for that reason. Number 13, I put Movie Hangout, Bohemian, Outside, Vibe, Cute, but I don't really get into the aesthetic all that often. 14, My First Pet, ranked it higher than most because I like the blinds. We don't have many blinds in the pack, so that's why it's ranked higher. I need blinds, what can I say? Number 15, I put the fitness stuff pack. I don't really think it brings much to your game at all. The rock climbing wall is just, I guess, handy to have a snowy escape, but I don't really use it. I just like some of the build and buy items. Number 16, luxury party stuff. I think this was the first stuff pack. It's just not very good. However, you know, if you're throwing a party, there's a few useful things in it. Number 17, spooky stuff pack. I don't like this pack. I basically don't use any items in this pack. I do not recommend this pack. <laughs> so let's check out what the poll said. Like I said, at number one, we had tiny living. Number two, laundry day. Number three, this really surprised me. Movie hangout stuff pack. Four, cool kitchen. Five, nifty knitting. Six, perfect patio. Not surprised either because of the hot tubs. Seven, kids room stuff. Eight, vintage glamour. Number nine, toddler stuff pack. Very cute, very handy. 10, backyard. 11, mosquito stuff pack. 12, romantic garden stuff pack. 13, bowling night. 14, fitness. 15, luxury party. 16, spooky. And the least favorite stuff back with a big percentage vote of 40% of the poll listed it as the worst stuff back. This is not surprising because there was a lot of criticism surrounding this pack because you have to have cats and dogs expansion pack in order to use the pack in its entirety. So that rubbed a lot of players the wrong way. I can understand why people don't like that. So anyway, you guys, let me know what you thought of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for those of you who contributed to the poll and I hope this helps you guys make some decisions of what packs you want to get next. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you're having a lovely morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever you are in the world. I'll speak to you soon. Tack tack!